Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Academy. All the multi-subject videos are designed to help teachers get ready for the new exams that are coming out in 2020 and 2021 for history, English, and science. So use this video to review core concepts and strategies for your exam. Number 19 from the M206 history exam. Which of the following statements best describes a major consequence of the withdrawal of federal troops from the South in 1877? I'm going to underline 1877. Remember, that's the end of Reconstruction. We think about Reconstruction because we've done the studies of the terms. We think about that time frame immediately after the Civil War, between 1865 and 1877. And we remember from our basic cursory review of Reconstruction that this was a very turbulent time between the North and the South. And during this time, the North had imposed federal troops to reinforce major pieces of legislation that had been passed like the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment. In 1865, the year that Lincoln was assassinated, we had the passing of the 13th Amendment, abolishing slavery. In 1868, we have the 15th Amendment, protecting citizenship rights and making sure that due process is followed. When we refer to due process, we're talking about you can't take away someone's right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness without a fair trial. And in 1870, the 15th Amendment being ratified, this is protecting voter rights. Well, these major pieces of legislation happened during Reconstruction and were reinforced by Northern troops in the South. And in 1877, the North withdrew those federal troops from the South. This is referring to the Compromise of 1877. And as part of this compromise, the North and the South agreed to several things. Leadership from the South being part of the president's cabinet, federal spending to be given to the South, and Northern troops to be withdrawn from the South. Without federal troops, some of the progress under the 14th Amendment that protected an individual's right to due process and their citizenship rights, and the 15th Amendment that protected discrimination in the voting booth was largely weakened. We're not going to see new legislation that supported the 14th and 15th Amendment until the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and the Voters Rights Act of 1965. So it's going to be almost 90 years before there's new laws passed that go back and put teeth to back up the 14th and 15th Amendment. What was the impact of withdrawing these troops? A, it enabled Southern landowners to restore the plantation system of the antebellum period. Well, we already said we didn't go back to plantations. So now the 13th Amendment is still in place. It's not A. B, it initiated a prolonged struggle for power between the Democratic and Republican parties across the South. C, it undermined Northern finance initiatives to restore the Southern economy. As part of the deal to end Reconstruction, it opened up pathways for that to happen. D, it largely nullified efforts to enforce the civil and political rights of free blacks and emancipated slaves in the South. I'm going to circle the word civil and political rights. So what it's saying is without the troops, it largely nullified the progress that was done in the 14th Amendment that protected citizenship rights and had that element of due process under the law, and the 15th Amendment that prevented discrimination in the voting booth. So when you read this question, I want you to understand why A, B, C are wrong. And I also want you to understand what's going on in D. Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Academy. If you like this video, press the like button below or subscribe to our channel. This allows us to do more videos for teachers on their teacher certification exams. And if you need additional help, you can come and check out a Go Academy workshop or webinar or tutoring. You go to www.goacademy.com. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.